welcome back. Now, bamboo is one of the most social, economically, or economical farming crop that can yield an annual investment return of about 1.6 million naira and above every year in Nigeria if ventured into. Its farming is a great long-term investment. It is eco-friendly, long-lasting, and self-replanting, which can last up to 70 years. According to the Food and Agriculture Organization, FAO, Africa has over 4 million hectares of bamboo forests, which represent approximately 4% of the world's bamboo resources. Nigeria is estimated to have about 800,000 hectares of bamboo forest, making it one of the largest bamboo resources in the region. Now, bamboo farming in Nigeria and Africa has great potential for export opportunities. I am now being joined by Zigwai Fander, a social and environmental entrepreneur with a passion to transform sustainable bamboo cane into economically viable products that improve the well-being of households and businesses. Now, Fander holds a degree in Master's in uh, Chemical Engineering from the University uh, of Aberdeen, UK. She has worked as a process safety engineer in the oil and gas industry and founded Lady Bamboo Limited, a social enterprise producing and processing bamboo, rotten and cane into sustainable products such as furniture, accessories, decors, cooking and dining utensils, among others. Many thanks for joining me, Zigwai. How do you pronounce your name, by the way? So my name is Zigwai. Zigwai, so I, I, I pronounced it right. Here. Yeah. <laughs> here you go, Justin. Yeah. So let's talk about um, this bamboo farm. It is, for my intro, uh, it is actually um, a market or a sector that has great potentials mm -hmm. for uh, not just Nigeria, but for Africa in general. And you have actually keyed into that uh, train, as it were. Uh, what actually inspired your going into that uh, line of business? Yeah, so for me, what inspired me was, so when I came back from the UK, because actually I did my uh, undergrad as well in the UK, so I got back home and then I was to do my internship. But I realized internship in Nigeria most of the time is not as in the UK because in the UK, if you're doing an, your internship, you're more or less like a worker, so they don't separate. But coming into Nigeria, there was no scope for me. And also, I just realized I wasn't doing much, so I stopped the internship. And obviously, you work with time. I'm time conscious, you know. So I didn't want to waste my time. So I just like, okay, what can I do to add value to myself and then uh, to my community? And I just thought of it that I should go into bamboo because of the um, possibilities it had. Because to be honest, bamboo is the new gold. Mm. And why do I say that? Because you and I know that one of the major problems that United Nations, World Bank are pounding and talking about is global warming. True. And one of the major things to solve that problem is bamboo. And why is it bamboo? Because bamboo releases about 35% oxygen mm. into the atmosphere more than the normal plants and the, plant, the trees you see around. Mm. And then when you use bamboo around, like your product, bamboo product and raffia and all that, because they're eco-friendly, they absorb carbon dioxide with about 30%. Mm. So it means that it's the major source to solve the problem of global warming. Okay. And of recent, uh, one of the conferences United Nations heard the um, ask or give India ultimatum to plant bamboo because it's one major source of as well that solved deforestation mm -hmm. problem because it has the ability to regenerate and then it has the root as well that helps solve the problem of erosion. Okay, fine. Uh, that's a very, very uh, equal way of looking at it. Now, let's yeah. talk about um, the business angle of bamboo. Mm -hmm. uh, from my intro, I said uh, it is expected to reach about $98.3 billion uh, dollars by 2025. That's in the next two years. Uh, just how far is Nigeria playing in that market, in that sphere? Yes, yeah, so I would uh, want to go with the present... Um Exclamation or the finding according to classified SPPD. Okay. They say that Nigeria have about 1.7 million hectares of natural existing bamboo. Yeah. Oh, so it cool. means that just the natural one, just like you did the introduction okay. earlier on, is found at the River Rhine area and all of those. So for me, I get my bamboo from Aochi, mostly Edo State. Aochi, Edo State. Yeah. So it means that with that uh, estimation of the natural existing bamboo we have, so also there's an estimated uh, findings that the bamboo market in Nigeria is very huge, which is estimated to be about 
20 billion USD. 20 billion. Yes, based on research, you know. Okay. So it means that if um, awareness, if there's proper awareness and a lot of people come into that uh, field, you know, like we can take advantage of it proper. And I believe that that will encourage or enhance the economic uh, capacity of Nigeria because we already have it already. We don't mm. have to plan it at the moment, even though we're looking ahead, like thinking on how to plan the bamboo mm. because it's a major raw material. Mm. If you want mm. to look at the wider scale and into the future, it means as we're using it, we have to look for a way of replacing it. Potentially. Yeah, okay. so we're thinking in that direction already. But the market is very, very huge. Okay, so for, I know that uh, you have a company and uh, you actually are uh, into um, the processing of it. Uh, there's a whole lot of uh, value chains uh, from um, the farming to uh, the finished products that we see. Which of them are you specifically involved in? So for me, for now, I am not doing it like the massive scale because if I want to go into the massive scale, I'll, my plan is to have like a massive bamboo processing company. Mm -hmm. So now we are now enhancing bamboo just at the elementary stage, I would say. Why do I say that? Because now we get bamboo, we don't really process it. All we do is to cut it, clean it up, and then treat it, and then do like our furnitures mm -hmm. and other easy or elementary stuff. But if we're looking at it at the wider scale, like if we want to meet the world standard, you know, we have to have like a massive industry because if you look at China in South Africa, there's a company called Musso. So what they do is this one, their own work is to process bamboo because when bamboo is processed, it can be converted to planks, it can be converted to boards. It can, in short, like BMW, most of their luxury cars, they use bamboo in oh, their wow. dash buses. Oh, yeah, really? yeah, the dashboard of the yeah, car. They I, was use ask you, I was going to ask you mm -hmm. about durability. Now, let's talk about uh, the processing uh, which are involved. You do the cleaning and you convert to mm -hmm. uh, furniture, to uh, upholstery and some other um, uh, value additions that you uh, you put into it. You yeah. know, so how's the acceptability like in Nigeria as part of the finished product? And mm -hmm. um, uh, talking about durability, how durable are these uh, finished products? So yeah, so bamboo is very, very durable. So for instance, I'll give you an example in the construction industry. Yes. So bamboo is used as a reinforcement uh, material. Mm -hmm. So because if you look at the iron rod you use around to make your decking and all of those stuff, it weighs about 20, 25 pounds. But bamboo has a good tensile strength. So it has about 28 pounds. So you can see like bamboo is economical and it, it, it durable more than even the iron rod you see around. Mm -hmm. So once it's treated, you know, like bamboo, the major problem is if you, you know, it has a hole inside it and um, because of the carbon dioxide or the sugar content, it attracts thermite. Mm -hmm. But once it's treated using boric acid, you know, that's it. Bamboo can last for as long as you want it. So, so, so specifically, I can make furniture mm -hmm. like this one I have in the studio, just all out of um, bamboo, except yeah. for really, and it will actually last for yes. long as you use the normal wood. Yes, I think one of the pictures I sent you for that furniture, mm -hmm. the, the woman testified that she used it for like 20 years now. 20 years? Yes. Oh, wow. Yeah, so it's very, very durable naturally. That's why in Asian countries and other countries that are well exposed with yeah. it and have good uh, knowledge of bamboo, they use it for constructions and they use it for a lot of stuff that is durable yeah. because they are aware of it. And researchers found out that yeah. it's even stronger than the iron rod that we spend that a lot of money buying it. Yeah. So, so most times now, when you go to some households, uh, you see uh, the furniture are made from cane. Uh, are they in any way related or extracted from uh, the bamboo, or are they uh, two different and raw materials? Yes, yeah, so they're two different materials. So bamboo, um, I would say it's a bigger, it's kind of wider and larger because um, if you look at it, it's taller mm -hmm. and it has like a hole maybe ranging from two inches and above. Mm -hmm. But the cane is normally slimmer, slim, okay. very slim. You see it around the riverine area. So maybe when you go to the river, you see all those trees around that are lanky yeah. and tall and curvy and all that. Yeah, most of the time they are the cane. But bamboo too grows in a muddy kind of place, like a riverine place where you put in rice and all that. Okay. But the difference is bamboo is bigger, wider and it grows 
taller and straight. You could see it's like sugar cane. Like for me, the way I describe it to people is, I say, do you know sugar cane? It's just like the bigger version of it. That's bamboo. Yeah, just that you don't take it in, you know. Even though we have about 1,500 species of bamboo based on research, you know, it grows depending on the region that you're in. Okay. Yeah. So what are the, some of the challenges uh, that uh, are inherent uh, in your sector? For instance, I know you've talked about uh, you know, the processing that um, are involved before you can actually get to do your finished products and all that. But aside from those um, uh, stuff that you had mentioned, what other challenge uh, can, uh, is there for your kind of business? Yes, so for me, I realized based on my findings of over time that I'm into this business, I realized that a lot of people are not aware of it. They don't know the benefit yeah. of it compared to other African countries. So for instance, I was in Kenya to represent Nigeria for the International Bamboo Study Tour yeah. in partnership with United Nations and IMBA. IMBA is the international body for bamboo and rattan. Yeah. So I realized that a lot of um, African countries in Asian countries, United Nations are so into it because this is one of the major means to reduce global warming. So why would so, that explain it? So I realized that in Nigeria, we don't have that much because yeah. there's not much of awareness. But I think now there are a lot of people, I have other people on board that are really pushing hard into it. So for instance, the progress we've made now is that we used to have our uh, as an association called the Bamboo Stakeholders of Nigeria. Mm -hmm. So if you're just interested on bamboo, we put you in that group. But towards that group, we worked towards it after the meeting in Kenya. We came back to Nigeria because there were a lot of things holding us back to mm -hmm. meet the international standard. Because our nation, Nigeria, have not really been, has not recognized Niger uh, bamboo as one of the sole means of trading. Mm -hmm. So because of that, when we came back, we formed a association called the National um, Bamboo Farmers, Processors and Marketers of oh. Nigeria. And okay. through that, we've been able to register with the Federal Ministry of uh, Industry, Trade and Investment Industry. currently. So I think through that means we'll get a lot of awareness, mm. then people will buy into it. All right, fine. So how lucrative is this uh, business, maybe in terms of um, the finished uh, product and uh, uh, what would you advise for startups, for people who have like minds and who may want to get on board on this uh, trend? So for me, I would say that first of all, it's passion. Because why do I say it's passion? Because when I started it, it was like people didn't know about it. So when you talk about it, it's like <laughs> you're weird, you know. But over time, uh, we're gaining more visibility now. So I would say, first of all, it has to be passion if you're interested about it. Because the bamboo market, like I said earlier on, is very huge. Because you can use bamboo as food. You can use bamboo to make clothing. You know, it, oh yeah, it has fiber in it. Yeah, no, because it has fiber. If you look at it, it has strong. So through some chemical processes, using enzyme as catalyst, it converts those fibers to wood. And you can use it as clothing. You can use it as energy material. You can use it pretty much in all industries. So for me, people have to, we have to create more awareness out there. So maybe we have to start having like exhibitions. Exhibition, maybe you should. Yeah, exhibitions. Okay. And then um, partnering with other ministries. And then now so how can the government play in in this in terms of um, standardization and in terms of uh, maybe giving um, uh, uh, a playground, a fair playground for business people like you to try very quickly in 30 seconds? Yes, yeah, so I think that we are now in a good track or in a good place now because initially we we're not doing stuff like that. Okay. But now that we've been registered officially with the Ministry of Industry, Trading and um, Marketing, mm -hmm. you know, I, investment, I believe that through that means we'll be able to uh, gain more visibility, more ground, and more people on board. And okay. obviously, it will have a good effect on the economic growth of Nigeria. All right, uh, uh, that's why I, I wish you all the best uh, in you. your endeavor. And I just um, trust that uh, with the visibility that uh, is on ground, uh, Nigeria to begin to appreciate that. And of course, mm -hmm. I will do so well because there's a whole lot to explore and so much money that the country or indeed the continent can make from this particular sector. Yeah. We do appreciate your time and thank you for joining us on the show. Thank you so much for having me. All right, me. I have been speaking with uh, my guest. Uh, she is a Gwai, uh, founder, social and environmental um, entrepreneur, and she... Uh, 
uh, founded and laid the bamboo limited and she is actually uh, growing in that line and of course Nigerians should start appreciating you know what uh, that particular sector can bring to the continent but that's the size of the show for today I am Justin Akadonia. Many thanks for watching. We'll return again tomorrow, specifically be looking at the CBN exchange rate, the Forex regime, and what's going on. We're doing a whole lot of explanation on that. Boy, you just want to join us for that one. Bye for now.